Welcome back to the Titanium Hanger. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great weekend. Today I want to talk to you about Masterpiece Leaders. And no, I'm not going to talk about Optimus Prime Megatron the whole video. Touch on them at the end, but there's more leaders in Transformers Masterpiece than just Optimus Prime and Megatron. So I want to talk about each of these, talk about the options and what's going on out there. Coming up! Okay, so I want to start out with the first leader and the leader of the Dinobots, that is Grimlock. The original one was MP08 from Grimlock, the Takara version. So that one is, okay, it was significantly undersized, and I think it was fan toys with their Scoria had booties. They called them the Scoria booties to put on this guy to make him taller so that he was more in scale. I mean, he was shorter than Optimus Prime, around the same size. He was just severely underscaled, but... The bot mode looks pretty good. The alt mode looked really good too. So uh, one of the things I do want to say is that it really doesn't seem like much was done with this character to be super different between all the options other than the size and a bit of the aesthetic when it comes to Giga Power. But this was a pretty good option, but it was a little undersized, a little bit small. In steps Reximus Prime. So now Reximus Prime stands a little bit bigger than the average one. So I think that the standard one was about 9.5 to 10 inches. And then this one upped it to close to 12. And so with that, you're into a real masterpiece, King of the Dinobots, with good old Grimlock being bigger. It's the same exact mold, but KO oversized. Uh, you can still get the, I think the metallic version is available for like 90 bucks on Show Z right now. And so I, I think the metallic one looks the best too. So it looks really good. But let's go ahead and look at some other options. Fansoy's made their grinder, and I think their grinder is a pretty decent option. Obviously, you've got the Fans Toys fanboys that are going to say only go with grinder, only go with the Fans Toys. But this is now kind of an old release, and they did do some sort of a head upgrade. I don't really know about all that. I don't own a grinder. I didn't bother with that one. But he's a pretty good looking figure overall. And so with that, I think that it's more of a cartoon target than what you're going to get with the Giga Power, but still, it's a little small. It's a little on the small side. I think all of the Fansways want a little on the smaller side, not as small as, say, what Takara did with their Grimlock. And and I do want to point out that I'm going to hand it, I'm going to give it to and hand it to Fans Toys and Giga Power. They did complete the entire team, not just the leaders. All you got from Takara was the leader. So, anyhow, I don't think you can go wrong with Fans Toys or Giga, so let's look at Giga Power. Now, the Giga Power one is the largest of all of them, and I think think he's about the exact same size as what we got with Reximus Prime though so it says it is 11.42 so technically Reximus is a half an inch taller than this one and this one's about an inch taller than uh, Fans Toy so anyway it does look great but again all of them look almost the same to me there's very slight differences in aesthetic cues here and there so with that I do think that you could not go wrong with any option aside from Takara's being too small. I do want to quickly touch on Hot Rod now getting into another leader, but this is pre-leader, so I'm not going to sit and talk about Ryan Paxes and stuff, but I do think that Hot Rod's every bit as important as Rodimus Prime, and Rodimus Prime is, I, oddly enough, too important to be left out of the conversation. So this is the first one that came out, the 28, and then they come out with the 40. Now the 40 is a target master, and here's the weird part about this. The 40 never got knocked off. That I know of. Uh, I thought I bought a knockoff one of them and I got one of those little missiles in the mail. It's just a little missile that goes with Wheeljack or something in the mail instead of this. So I kind of got screwed over. I thought I was buying a knockoff. I don't think it's ever been knocked off. Now I think that was the joke on me Jack that this one has been knocked off. They do knock off the actual first one, the 28. Uh, that's available right now. You can get one of those pretty cheap. But getting the one with the Target Master is the hard part, which is kind of why, and I believe this is why X-Transbots includes this Target Master with theirs, because they know so many people couldn't get it, or you have to pony up and pay big, big bucks for the 40, though the 40 is excessively overpriced versus the 28 and all of that kind of stuff. And I believe this is also an example that Takara has channel power over the KOs. They have some control over the KOs, because none of the pluses have been KO'd that I have found. Getting into fan toys, Hoodlum now... Here's the problem that a lot of the collectors have with Hoodlum. I personally like the bot mode better for Hoodlum. I like the alt mode better for when you're looking at the Takara one. So we'll do a quick alt mode comparison here in just a bit. But I think 
that bot mode looks really good for Hoodlum. Side by side, we have Fanswiz on the right and we have Takara on the left. And just, you decide. You decide which one you like more. I never, ever liked the bot mode of Takara from day one. That's why I passed on 28, lucked out and got the KO for like $26. Then I got another KO that I keep in alt mode. But the Hoodlum was about a $100 figure. He sold out now. Now he's pushing like $250. And this is another one that should be on the reissue list for Fans Toys. For whatever reason, they don't. I'll tell you why, because when they originally made this figure, it sat on the market for like 10 months, and then all of the negative about the lack of articulation, and then there's got one little spot that always rubs paint. So they may never reissue this guy, because there was so much negative feedback on it. All right, all mode for Hot Rod. Uh, on the left is Takara, the right is Fans Toys. I do prefer Takara on the left. I still to this day use that for my comparisons. I use the Takara one in alt mode. And then the bot mode, of course, uh, I use the fan toys, but you can look at these and see which one you like the most. I still prefer Takara's alt mode. I mean, they did that right. The bot mode on Takara, I think it just looks way off. It's just proportionally it's off. And fan toys nailed that, but has less articulation. Okay, so looking at the DX9 carry for an actual Rodimus Prime. Now this is a stylized take, and it's the only alternative to Takara, which we're gonna see here in a bit. But I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm, gonna, I'm really going to be more honest and open about my feelings going forward, especially as tight as the economy is, that uh, I just want you to know what I'm thinking about all this. I didn't go forward because I didn't like the stylized look, and I thought the price was a bit high when, at the same time, we had already gotten the MP09 from Toys R Us at the time, and I had got mine on sale for 45 bucks. So they were like 75 and I got mine for 45 or something like that. So... This is an all-in-one transformation, and the trailer's built in kind of a Road King kind of situation, and with that, it does look a bit stylized, and there's a bit of a chunk on the backpack, but it's quite impressive, and it is a solid figure that holds up. Here it is side-by-side -side with good old MP09, and I think MP09 is more for me. I do not care for Carrie, but he's not a bad figure. By the way, by I, everybody that owns it and has reviewed it, raves about it. But as fragile and easily breakable and frustratingly transformation for MP09, I still prefer MP09. Till we get a better option down the road, we might one day get a fan toys or something. All right, comparing the alt modes on the Rodimus, I I still like the MP09 alt mode better. But I want to say something about this: the MP09 alt mode. It actually is a car with a plug-in trailer kind of thing, and not an all-in-one with the DX9 carry, which I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that, because that's kind of how the G1 toy went and all of that. But they were trying to also do a gimmick where you could have Hot Rod and you could also have Rodimus in the same figure with slight variances. No, you can't. No, you can't. They tried to apply too close to the sun. That might be part of the problems with this figure. But anyway, that's how they look. I still prefer the overall look of Takara to carry in alt mode. Got to talk about Galvatron now, and so there's some Galvatron options. Haven't talked about these in a while, but DX9, and I, I believe this one's still available at Show Z right now, if it's not sold out, or it's pre-ordered or something like that. So, the thing about this is that this is the one, it looks good enough that I just passed on the Fans Toys one for a couple of reissues until they finally got to the M, and we'll talk about all those. But this one is pretty solid. It, the DX9 is not bad. Now, it's got one of those things where you have to have either a wide A stance or the legs close together. It's just strange type of stance in the hips. Uh, there's a couple of weird things to it, but it has a better alt mode. And probably the best alt mode for the ones on the market right now. And the bot mode isn't bad, but it does lack in paint, does lack in presentation, and does lack in some fingers a little bit. They're kind of weak, but uh, I didn't like the shoulder pads too floppy. But I do think it was solid, and for years it was on my shelf, and I was really proud to own it because it's not a bad figure. Of course, I'm going to have to hand it to Fan Toys. Theirs is better. My stubbornness in waiting to get it maybe paid off because I probably would have passed on the M version if I already had the original. This is the original version. The M version is more of a movie kind of a version, and so this is a very nice looking figure. Solid overall. I, I'm happy that I picked one up. I think I like the more purpler version. But unless I had them both in hand to tell you, I feel like the first version isn't as shiny as the second version. The second version is more blue than purple. So those are the situations. But uh, we've got another one coming, but we do need to quickly look at an alt mode. 
The downside to this FD-16, the Sovereign, is the alt mode being kind of short and stubby, not matching animation as much as the DX9. DX9 wins here, and I, I even the fanniest of fanboys have said that, yeah, the DX9 looks better in alt mode, but they like the bot mode, they prefer bot mode. I can definitely agree with that. I mean, it, the bot mode is where it's at for me, so I don't really care so much that this is short and stubby and not matching animation. The last contender is a decade-long mold that is being revived here, and this one is X-Transmods. And there's, this is uh, Abaddon, Abaddon, or Abaddon. I, I like to say Abaddon because it's an aban abandoned project. Now they did bring Dante back, and they made Dante with their Inferno, and then this guy's coming along, which we don't know when this is going to be out, and this is still in grayscale. There's no real progress shown on this project, but once X-Transbots puts this into the, the limelight in the mainstream, it's going to move fast, so... Uh, but it's exciting to people. This is going to be, I think, smoother and cleaner and a little bit less lines than what we got with the fan switch. It'll be fun to have these side by side and just see what's going on with them. Pretty interesting. I don't know if it'll be fun to transform though. And then there's obvious subsequent recolors of these figures, like the fans toys doing a toy color. Uh, X Transplants will probably do 15 different colors. Who knows? And I really didn't talk about it, but you know, there's G2 versions of Grimlock out there. Since there are two Silver Bolts, there's not two Superions to truly pick from from the 21 inch scale. We could spend all day talking about all the different like 15 inch and 17 inch, 18 inch, but the 21 inch scale is where I'm at and I really feel like that's the true Masterpiece scale today and uh, MMC is doing some of these other combiners, but uh, to me, I'm just not going to be talking about those. We'd be here all day. So anyway, Superion, there's really this and Zeta. So let's take a look at those two. With Zeta on the left and Fansways on the right, I have to admit that I do like Fansways better. Uh, it's hard to say that because they are so much more expensive. Fansways is so much more expensive and Zeta is really pretty good and their bot modes are not great, but this is one of, this is the best alt mode, bot mode, sorry, bot mode that they made in their figures and it was exciting at the time and it's still exciting to have the combined figure on the shelf but individual bots fans toys destroys it fans toys wins hands down actually remember making these comparison videos a long time ago it was a lot of fun making comparison videos real quick we're going to talk about just the three options here so on the left we have x trans bots motor master in the middle we have dx9 I believe that's right. And on the right, we have the Fans Toys. And of these, I actually like x Transbots the most. And uh, everybody else that has Road King is going to say Road King's better. I just can't get by the, the size of the legs and, and a few other things because of the trailer compacted on there. But looking at these three, uh, DX9's, the arms are really long. And there's a few weird things about the DX9 in the middle there. But uh, I actually like to have my, sadly enough, my x transbots in my combined mode because it makes it feel more solid. So uh, that's where it is. The X9's solid, you can just have the figure out of it. Uh, and we don't know about fan switch yet. And so for the larger scale, there's really only Zeta in town for Bruticus, and we don't know anything about defense or coming for x transbots and all that kind of stuff. That's still a lot of rumor, and there's a few things about it that we've seen some pictures and stuff, but but for the other combiners in the 21 inch scale, they're, the leaders, there just really isn't much out just yet. Aside from the Zeta one, which looks good. It looks pretty good. I don't think that many people are going to display these in Bob mode anyway. Now, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time talking about Megatron and Optimus Prime, but then I will talk about Optimus Prime because <laughs> there's something to say. But I do want to say, Megatron, it's been a long time since we've gotten a new... Masteries Megatron, which is not a bad thing, actually. We're focusing on other characters, other figures, hopefully, that we can get knocked out. But MP36 is still, in my opinion, the best. Uh, the second best, I would say, is the DX9 version, even though his front shins look like they're just flat. And then and then Apollyon, then the Make Toys, Despotron Make Toys was just huge and bulky. It's just a whole different animal. But uh, with that, I would like to see Magic Square or one of them throw their hat in the ring, but it would be... It's just shocking how we'll get Optimus Prime after Optimus Prime, but then we won't get a Megatron. That's just weird. 
because I would say the community would support it. So when it comes to Optimus Prime, there's a ton of options that are out there. I mean, there's, there's no shortage of Optimus Primes. There's an original, there's the 2003 12-inch, the 2011, and then 2019. But when it comes to modern day, there's really a, only a few with Magic Square. There are version 1 and version 2, and then there's the Transform Element, then there's Takara. And so with that, there's, there's just a lot of Optimus Primes, a lot of different versions, a lot of variations. And that's been talked to death. We don't really need to talk it to death. But I want to say that I think the community is most excited about what's coming from Fans Toys. And that is this Fans Toys FM02 Marsh. Now, this is actually called Fantastic Model. Something along those lines. Is that what it says? Fantastic Model. And this is so that if they get slapped on the wrist, they don't get slapped too hard. For getting too close to something that's sort of off limits. That Takara would say it's off limits to make an Optimus Prime. Even though Magic Square got, a lot, got away with their Optimus Prime and uh, a Transform Element, they didn't... I don't know, Transform Element's kind of been in and out of trouble too, but with this, most people are most excited about what's underneath this, but the whole reason they revealed their Ultra Magnus is to bot block x Transbots. x Transbots version looks really good, and because there's not a bot in, a, in armor, it can be a little thinner than fans toys overall and it can be a little bit more heroic so it might actually be the best looking one on your shelf at the end of the day and it's up for order it's actually in stock at shows again now this is a big kick in the the, the robot uh gears <laughs> big kick in the gears so the first one came out it was 200 then it had a couple of problems like the shoulder if you turned it too much it unscrewed itself so this should be approved, theoretically, and it's only $165, so it's $35 cheaper. So uh, I missed it the first go-around. I've got it coming for this next go-around from Show Z for $165. So that's pretty awesome. That's uh, kind of kicked the nuts that people got the first time. And so hopefully it's fixed, but let's see what's underneath the shelf of Fans Toys. Now, although we've talked about this before in the past, this is a look into what Fans Toys Optimus Prime is going to look like and as it breaks through the armor and all that kind of stuff. That is a lot of pieces of armor that go on, but it should be pretty simple to handle, and it will build a trailer and all that kind of stuff. That's interesting how that's going to work. Are they going to figure out the engineering and the combining par no, no, the combining parts on this? Uh, but let's look at the actual bot, and I think he looks fantastic. So uh, it's got that clean lines. It's it's got that heroic look, and it's not really exaggerated too much in any way shape form or angle and it, it's just so clean now how's it going to get from a point a to point b that's another question and of course this would be an obviously an easy repaint with just some slight differences but i do want to point something out here's what i want to point out everybody's assuming that this is going to be exactly the same as the optimus prime but what we've seen time and time again with their figures like we're going to see with gears into swerve and Am I saying that right? Gears and the Swerve, is that right? Uh, we're going to see from Brawn into Outback that they are so many different parts that have been changed that they're not the exact same figure that might be the same thing going on here. So as a quick look at Masterpiece Leaders, it doesn't all have to be Megatron and Optimus Prime. There's other leaders out there in the Transformers universe that we can talk about and have some fun with. And so with that, I want to see what you have to say about Masterpiece Transformers leaders and what leaders are out there that I didn't talk about. And of all these options, which ones do you like the most? Like and subscribe to the Ramehanger out.